the frustration uh, with Lewis's Monaco race was he spent almost all of it in traffic. He didn't get many laps to show what he could actually do. Why did we not stop Lewis sooner when we'd seen Gasly putting in good lap times on that intermediate tyre? Well, it was all about what was happening behind Lewis on track and he never actually had a clear stop window. If he had a clear window, we would have definitely done it earlier. And we knew that the intermediate would perform well. The question is, can a car on intermediates overtake a car on X-Wet? And we saw with Lewis when we eventually went for that with Esteban, it was a very difficult thing to do. Why were George's times on the hard tyre so good, yet the times on the medium were still seeing that gap to the lead cars? Well, it's fair to say we were encouraged by those times on the hard tyre, not just the lap times he was putting in, but also the warm-up looked very strong. He was getting the tyre to work well. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get many laps of that before we saw the uh, red flag stoppage. So at that point, we decided to switch to the medium tyre for the start. That would give us better performance in the opening laps. We felt that it would be okay to go to the end of the race, but actually what you saw on our car and on quite a few others was that that softer compound was graining a bit. It was taking out the front tyres, costing a bit of grip. And at the end of the race, George was actually um, pretty close to being overtaken by Lando, who'd come in for another set. So the main reason was really just the durability of that tyre in the cool conditions and the effect of that graining. Why did we do different strategies with the drivers? So with Lewis using the intermediate tyre to bridge between X-Wet and Slick tyres, and with George, we went straight from X-Wet to, to Slick. Well, the reality was the cars around them and what the race situation was. With George, had he done that, he would have dropped two positions on track. And at Monaco, you don't want to lose those positions because if you can't get through, there's no way of recovering it. And with Lewis, it was really that we had nothing to lose. We could see that the Alpines were going to try and get through uh, with Alonso from X-Wet straight to Slick. So we decided to give it a go because it all hinged on whether Lewis could recover that position he was going to drop uh, to Esteban and whether there was anything to gain by being able to post quicker times on that intermediate tyres. But as I said, it was really down to the differing situations between the cars and who would lose the most places doing the extra stop. How much performance did Lewis lose with the damage to the front wing uh, from the contact with Esteban? Well, it wasn't too big a number. Looking at the data we get off the car, it was around one to two tenths of a second, so not large. And conveniently, the red flag allows us to repair any accident damage. So we could swap that front wing without actually having any time penalty for doing the work during a, a pit stop. And more pleasing was that that was the only damage that we had over the course of the Monaco re weekend. So a really good job by both drivers to bring the cars home more or less intact. Why did Lewis change his helmet under the red flag? Well, in those very dark, um, wet conditions at the start of the race, they're running a clear visor and that gives them the best visibility in the spray. When you get into the dry race, also the sun is a lot lower in the sky. The end of the race was near six o'clock in the evening and he then moves to a tinted visor just because it gives you better visibility, better contrast, but also you avoid the sun getting in your eyes. If it wasn't for the Alpines, would Lewis have had the pace to be in that battle for fifth with George and Lando? Well, almost certainly yes. Now, the frustration uh, with Lewis's Monaco race was he spent almost all of it in traffic. He didn't get many laps to show what he could actually do, but the car was working reasonably well. Uh, we haven't got the pace there to compete with the Ferrari and the Red Bull, um, but certainly he would have been in amongst that battle with George and with Lando. Why didn't George follow Norris in pitting to take a, a new set of tyres to go for the fastest lap? Well, this comes down to what was fitted at the restart on that red flag. Uh, we decided to put George on the medium tyre for the warm-up. You saw Lando go for the harder um, tyre, and that also had been used earlier in the race. So the converse is that the options for the pit stop, Lando had a new medium available to him, George only had a used hard tyre, and that was really why we didn't decide to come in and go for the fastest lap. Now, what we hadn't expected 
were Lando's times to be sustained at such a high rate. We hadn't expected him to be so close to George at the end of the race. And if we'd known that, with hindsight, we would have come in and taken the used hard, even if we weren't going to be in the fight for fastest lap. So what were the take-homes from the Monaco Grand Prix weekend and the expectations for Baku? Well, certainly it was a lot harder to get the car to work around Monaco than it was in Barcelona. In Barcelona, we've shown that we had good race pace, even though we know that there's still work to do to close the gap to Red Bull and to Ferrari. But the challenge of Monaco is the low speed nature. It's a very bumpy circuit and we were struggling with the ride of the car. That was affecting the, the confidence for the drivers to carry speed. And it just meant that we couldn't run it as close to optimum as we had been able to do in Spain. Now, Baku might present some similar challenges. We're working on areas though to try and improve that ride, try and be able to run the car a bit closer to its optimum window. But we're well aware that in addition to adding base performance to the car, we've got to make it work over a wider range of circuits. So these are all things that we're busy with um, in the next week in preparation for Baku, but also longer term because there's other challenging tracks that will come up. But all of those projects are being worked on really hard because the team and the drivers are desperate to get back to the front. Thank you very much for all of your questions. We will be back in a couple of weeks' time to answer more from the Baku Grand Prix.